Guys, it's sort of been the renaissance of the pistol caliber carbine the last couple of years. Never been more options. And today, there's yet another option. And we're going to dive into this a little bit. The uh, Ruger PC Charger 9mm. Let's check it out. All right. Yes, it takes Glock mags. We're going to get into that. Let's have some fun. <laughs> Here we go. All right, all out. Good stuff. <laughs> all right. Guys, welcome back. Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. I'm gonna take my ears off here for a second. Uh, we are gonna be talking about this Ruger Charger. Really cool setup. Now, I have to admit, I have a, a tiny confession to make, all right? When I first held the initial uh, PC rifle, you know, the rifle version of this, uh, the new nine millimeters uh, from Ruger, I was not a huge fan of it at all because the weight, it was just such a heavy gun. Because I think literally you could get an M4, <laughs> you know, a reasonably set up M4 for the same weight that you would have in the 16 inch version of the Charger. It's just a big, bulky, heavy gun. And I wasn't a huge fan of it. And then the pistol version came out, uh, the takedown PC Charger that we see here uh, came out. And I was like kind of indifferent about it because I was like, well, you know, it's probably just heavy and you know, cumbersome and the weight was a real big issue for me on that. Well, I picked one up and I was like, man, you know, this thing actually is not that bad. It's well balanced. Um, yes, it is a little chunky uh, compared to other PCCs, but it's got a nice rugged aspect to it. And the design of it really reminds me a lot of like a big 1022 in a lot of ways. It's got a reciprocating uh, bolt handle like a 1022. The cool thing about the setup is it actually ships with two different magazine well adapters. Now, of course, we have the evil Glock magazine <laughs> adapter in it, but it is set up to take Ruger mags as well, um, SR series uh, Ruger mags. And you actually remove the entire gun out of the chassis and you pull the magazine adapter from the top up. So it, it, it picks up and pulls out. So once you install that mag adapter, it actually sits down in there and it's nice and solid. Um, one thing that I noticed on this is mine right out of the box had a really, really stiff magazine release. Okay, the button would push in and kind of get stuck and like a, like a, in the end position and it w really didn't want to snap out. Um, I took a T-driver and I just broke the tension on that screw and gave it literally just a tiny bit of a turn to loosen it and it, it, it's fine now. So I think that that screw holding the magazine release uh, button on there was just a little bit too tight and was causing it to uh, I guess flex in a weird position But once I just broke that tiny amount of tension there uh, that seems to have gotten that uh, taken care of uh, it Comes with a hand stop you see M lock uh, rail sections through and throughout it is a takedown Okay, which is really cool. So you have a takedown feature um, My particular unit from the factory had a very loose uh, Barrel in terms of the way it was set up, but of course you just uh, tighten the lock ring and you get it to where it uh, torques over nice and tight and you just kind of play with it and find the exact position that it sort of um, locks over and cams into a nice tight position and that's the same thing that you would do with the 1022 takedown and we've messed with several of those and um, not really a big issue there uh, barrels is six inches on this and is threaded half by 28 uh, this one's wearing a centurion nine millimeter from liberty all right so um a nice cam with generous volume and uh, not too long, uh, not too fat, just a, a good average uh, suppressor in terms of volume and uh, size and weight, okay? Um, the chassis system on this particular gun seems to be better thought out than the 1022 Charger. Uh, they added some QD points here in the rear, which is really handy. You have a pick rail on the back. Uh, now this gun does not ship with any type of a brace, but with the rear pick rail, you can add whatever you want. In this particular case, I've got just a fixed um, SP tactical tail hook here and it folds. This is a pistol. This is not considered a short barrel rifle. And being a takedown is very convenient. We've got this one married up with the Steiner MRS. Um, this has kind of been one of our go-to uh, red dot sights that we put on a lot of pistol caliber carbines. Um, the gun is balanced well. 
It is compatible with standard AR-15 furniture. This one is wearing the original, you know, Ruger uh, AR grip, but you can put whatever grip you want on there. Uh, like you probably recall on our 1022 Charger that we did, uh, we opted for the Magpul K grip on our other one. I will change this out eventually, but I was trying to leave this thing as stock as possible, so I decided to leave uh, the grip in place. We're gonna shoot the gun a little bit more, and we do have some different Glock mags to try out. Um, that was a factory Glock magazine. We have another factory Glock magazine, Federal 150 grain Simtech. All right, let's have a little fun. There's really no way to release uh, the bolt other than pulling back and letting go, similar to a Ruger 1022. The bolt lock, in terms of locking the bolt to the rear, is exactly the same type of mechanism as the 1022. It's just bigger. So that's kind of neat. All right, let's have a little fun. I'm going to do something real, real quick here, guys, while, while we're filming. I'm going to bump the brightness up on this Steiner because it is bright as heck out here and I need some extra brightness. Okay. All right, much better, much better. Nice. Okay, 150 grain Federal Simtech out of an SGM Tactical magazine. Let's give this a try. All right, cute little rig. I will mention something. Okay, that mag worked. Um, the only minor detriment so far that I can see about this gun that I'm not as, as much of a fan of, the trigger is very, very, very heavy. Um, in terms of out-of-the-box PCC, I have to say this is one of the heaviest triggers that I've experienced. Um, the heat transfer also, because this is uh, an alloy four-end and everything, uh, it's definitely getting warm after those three mags, but gosh, running great. And the crazy thing too is, as I'm shooting this thing, I can hear the bolt bouncing in there and I can hear the action noise over the sound of the report of the gun. Now, that may not be coming through on film. Look, I'll put a couple of rounds in the dirt, but it's the craziest sensation to be able to hear that bolt reciprocating, that big hunk of mass, you know, bumping back and forth when you're shooting it. And I can hear the round more downrange and more the, of the bolt reciprocating than I even hear of the report of the gun with the suppressor, which is really cool. Now those 150s are really quiet and they seem to shoot really good. We're gonna move on to some Aguila 124 grain ball ammunition. I've got one mag of this to try out of a factory Glock mag. This is gonna be a little louder, but let's check it out. All right. Man, this thing is a cool little setup. Absolutely. <laughs> very, very cool. All right. Woo. She's getting hot. I tell you what, I'm going to change things up just a little bit because I want to shoot those sodas. Now, I do want to test this gun with some defensive ammunition as well. Uh, so I am going to run some spear 147 grain gold dot ammunition. Um, carry ammo and like, you know, more of your hollow points and defensive stuff have been really, really difficult to get. Um, so it's, it's taken me a lot of effort and time to try to procure some of this hollow point ammo to test out in some of our videos, but uh, we definitely want to test out our defensive ammunition. So I've got two whole magazines of 147 grain spear gold dot, standard pressure. So we want to see how the gun can feed some hollow points. And let's just face it, I want to see those sodas essentially disappear. Uh, I will say the gun is getting very, very hot. That four end is almost too hot to touch. Um, I did add some Magpul. MWAT covers, 
and that does help a little bit with the heat transfer. Um, the stop on the bottom is getting like new clear hot. Um, I'll probably just pull that hand stop off and try to put some of the, the M-Lock swells on the bottom too, just to kind of keep your hand from getting toasty. And honestly, the shape and size of that fore end, probably, I could probably, I'll tell you what, we'll call up Coltac and we'll see if Coltac can make like a little wrap to go over the end of the fore end to help with like the heat transfer and stuff like he does for his suppressors. Who knows? Maybe we just invented a new product and we don't realize it. But anyway, I digress. Gold dots, 147s against our evil sodas. I keep wanting to look for like a magazine or a bolt release or something, but you know, you got to just do it like a 1022. Whew. All right. All right, sodas, into the line. Ooh, failure to feed hollow points. Well then, that's not good, boys and girls. It's really not. Um, all right, I want to just quickly mention something as well. Uh, over on, I believe it was either Instagram or Facebook. I can't remember. If you're not following us, make sure you follow us over there. Uh, we had one guy that was asking, hey, in your PC carbine, have you tested defensive ammunition yet because I want to know how well it feeds defensive loads and it seemed to plant an idea in my mind that maybe people have had reservations about how well these things will feed hollow points I got to looking into it and it turns out that some people have had issues with certain types of hollow points in this particular gun design so let's see if we can replicate the issue again but gosh I hope not <laughs> because I mean that's I mean if you're going to use this for self-defense you obviously want it to be able to feed defensive ammo all right, let's try. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe we had a fluke issue. Yep. Failure to feed. Wow. That's not something we see every day. That's a shame, too. That's the strangest thing. And, of course, it jacked up that, uh, jacked up that projectile. I'll tell you what, for academic purposes, I'm going to go ahead and set this mag to the side. Uh, I have another magazine of 147 gold dot. It's loaded properly. I know it is. No issues there. Let's try again, this time with a separate magazine, see if we get the same issue. Now, unfortunately, guys, listen, <laughs> uh, Defensive Ammo Depot doesn't exactly have every variety of uh, defensive ammunition sitting around that I'd like to try. So unfortunately, I'm, not a, I'm only able to test this one type of ammo today, so I apologize. But hopefully this is a peek under the hood as to what we can expect. All right, let's try this magazine. Okay. A little lowly so soda hanging down there. Okay. that mag worked that's odd well maybe it was just a bad magazine there's a reason that I number my magazines in case there is some type of a weird fluke issue let's try the magazine again give it one more chance and maybe it's possible this is a bad magazine okay I'm gonna make sure my hands nowhere near the mag or anything I don't think that would be an issue but all right, let's try. All out. Hmm. Very strange. I will say, man, that ammo has got some mm behind it. Like when you squeeze the trigger, that thing is, is getting some, it's getting some lead down range. And when it hits that target, you can really hear that crazy energy transfer. Man, we just burned up a lot of gold dots, but that's cool. I mean, take it for what you will, guys. We had a few failures to feed. No idea if it was our magazine or not. One mag did it, one didn't. 
uh, both factory Glock magazines. You guys take that with a grain of salt. Uh, take that as you will. Um, this joker is getting incredibly hot. Uh, I'm going to let it cool down a little bit, and then we'll shoot these other two mags. Uh, I've got some Norma 115 grain ball. Uh, I think it's safe to say we know it's going to work, uh, but this sucker is starting to get uh, nuclear, so I'm going to cool it down, and uh, we'll reset a few things and finish this up. All right, two more mags out of the PC charger. Uh, I am going to don the Ear Pro for this because this thing is a little pitchy uh, with full power ammo. Uh, running this fast even with the suppressor so all right um, I noticed too that suppressed this gun overall because I mean being a blowback it is a little bit pitchy you know even even well the 150 grain Simtech wasn't so bad but the 147 grain gold dot even that was a little bit on the pitchy side but uh cool all right this is some um, Norma 115 grain uh, range and training this is their uh, you know kind of bulk plink and load Very nice. Very, very, very nice. This gun's a contender. I think it's definitely got a couple of things going for it. Uh, the price on these is, is very reasonable, so that's definitely a, a consideration is the, uh, you know, modest price. Very cool. Very nice. All right. <laughs> Guys, it has been one incendiary day. It is a million degrees out here. It is a hot Georgia summer day. So I appreciate you guys hanging out here in the heat, suffering through this with me. <laughs> um, I think the charger's got a few things going for it. I do like the takedown feature. That makes maintenance and cleaning really easy. Uh, she does get pretty hot. But then again, I mean, we've shot a lot of rounds through this gun today in a pretty rapid succession. Um, it is a very simple and basic PCC that is priced very reasonable and has a lot of features that modern shooters expect out of a PCC. So definitely a good job on their part to uh, come up with something like this. I think it's got a lot going for it in that regard. The interchangeable mag wells is really cool. Uh, I could totally see down the road if someone wanted to adapt other magazine types uh, to this system. You totally could. It comes with the Ruger setup and the Glock, obviously, as I said before, but Really cool stuff. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. It's always a great day to sling some 9mm. PCCs are so much fun. Light recoil, man, just these things are a blast to shoot. And uh, we always enjoy making these videos. So thank you for being a part of it. Uh, definitely want to thank all of our Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. Thank you. I'd like to thank all the folks who purchased man cans and those of you who purchased t-shirts over on Ballistic Inc. Thank you for supporting your favorite content creators and seeing value in what we do. Uh, it means a lot to me and my family, and I'm sure I can speak for everyone, all of our collective families as well. So if you see value in what we do and you wish to support us, those are the most direct ways that you can do so. The man cans, we got some great ones that we're putting together, gear that we pick out just for you. You're gonna love them. Go check them out. Guys, have a great one. We'll see you next time. Many more videos on the way.